as you can see, uh, quite smart, quite young looking. Everybody tells me that. <laughs> and I have a number of people to thank for that. And that is my children and my wife. They keep me young. You do. That's how it works. And I think for everybody else, you need to look at that and try and put that across to everybody you meet with. If you feel young and you're here for a good time, unfortunately we're not here for a long time. <laughs> we make the most of it and we should all make the most of what we do. 440 days ago, Mel and I were down by the harbour side and we sort of start every sort of holiday by going down to the harbour, have a little drink, bite to eat sort of thing. And being teachers, we get to do that oof, every couple of weeks on holiday. Um, but this time was a little bit different because what Mel didn't know was that I had a ring in my bag alongside champagne and strawberries and bits and bobs. So we're sitting down there by the lifeboat and I'm sort of thinking, right, just looking for that sort of perfect time to sort of pop the question. I'm being Weymouth, you know everybody. So I'm just reaching to the bag and then somebody pops by, starts a chat. Then somebody else pops by. And there's some people on holiday go, you two are a bit posh, aren't you? Having your champagne down by here. That's gone and I think, right, now is the moment I'm gonna go. So I reach into the bag and I hear, excuse me. And there's a yacht pulling in with a bloke who wants help tying it up. And I thought, we're not gonna get there. This is not going to happen. So anyway, finally popped the question. And uh, there was a long pause before she answered. I thought, oops. <laughs> but actually, you know what Mel's like? She's so organised, she was already working out how many vegetarian meals we needed. <laughs> you know, so. Fortunately, fortunately, she said yes, so, so here we are. I've been putting off writing the speech for a while, not because I didn't want to do it, but because I didn't really know where to start. Um, for as long as I can remember, life has been part of my life mopping up my bloody tears when I was little and just always there for me when I was a kid. Even though I'm slightly older now, he's still always there, no matter what. Now it's my mum. My mum has been through thick and thin with me and understands me more than anyone in the world. She's kind, smart, thoughtful and the most beautiful girl I know. There is so much more I could say about her, but there's just not enough time. I just want to let you know, mummy, that I love you more than anything in the world. The last thing I'd like to say is thank you. Thank you for both being six, such being amazing parents and inspirational role models. I couldn't thank you enough for everything you've ever done for me. To mum and life. I was expecting to be very, very nervous this morning. Um, and I expected the nerves to sort of kick in, but it, it didn't happen. Um, and I was sort of thinking, oh, it's going to happen any moment. And then I turned around and I saw you walking down the aisle. And I thought, wow, wow. That's why I'm not nervous. It's because it's just right. It's just meant to be, isn't it? So now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> so you look stunning. You're amazing. I'm very honored to be your husband. Melanie, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Life, I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, Life and Melanie have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are man and wife.
It's an absolute honour for us to be here to celebrate the marriage of these two wonderful people here this afternoon. However, of course, one of those wonderful people couldn't make it here today, so we're going to have to talk about life instead. <laughs> I'm here all week, thank you very much. Um, I've taken quite an organised approach to this speech and I've produced a list of contents, all right? So I'm going to begin with an anecdote about life. Then there's going to be a slightly ruder anecdote about life. Then there'll be some mild swearing. <laughs> then there'll be an innuendo, probably going to follow, followed by some further swearing, I'm guessing. Then there's going to be attempt both of us to recover any lost ground, I think. Followed by an embarrassing silence, tempered with one final endearing anecdote about life. <laughs> Supported by the toast, and then it's your chance to silently judge Nick and I as you secretly gloat to your neighbour that you could have done much better than this hopeless charade <laughs> that's going to happen. OK? I thought we'd go back all the way back to school and talk about the grammar school where, we, where me and Mark and I became friends with life, got to know him. So, life started school in the autumn of 1982, which is, you know, dinosaurs were roaming the earth and all that sort of thing. Now, Culture Club, if you're old enough to remember, had a song in the hit parade at the time. I was, yeah. And it was called, Do You Really Want To Hurt Me? <laughs> so, life was to use that song, basically, as the basic foundations of a five-year sick note to avoid learning anything, applying himself whatsoever, and engaging with society as a whole. So, to be honest, Mark and I would love to tell you about our time at school with life, but to be honest, I don't remember him being there at all. <laughs> well, I was there. It was me. Yeah. After the grammar school, we all went to Weymouth College and things went from bad to worse, to be honest. Um, life pretended to study some A-levels at Weymouth College. He signed up for four and he whittled it down to two by the end of the first week. He'd, um, he'd swap and change his choice of um, four A-levels or A-levels on a regular basis and he was quickly to become known as the chameleon of further education. He finally settled, I think it was, with needlework and pastry studies, wasn't it? <laughs> he did, however, maintain a firm love of Latin and he can still recite all the poems of Catullus and you know exactly why Caecilius left in Pua, don't you? Right, good, good man. So, when it comes to the other women, other than the boot in his life, the be his beautiful bride Mel, frankly, neither of those can quite believe it. To be honest, I mean, punching above your weight, I think it's, <laughs> it's it, I think it's cool. So, so w we saw his future. <laughs> we saw his future settling down with Big Airy Dave from the kebab shop. So, <laughs> yeah, he's 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 unavailable for comment, in fact, but. Uh, so, so we're delighted. So anyway, enough of Morecambe and Wise. I'm sure you're all looking forward to getting to the bar. So it just remains for me to propose a toast to the bride and groom. So you can all be upstanding. So may today be the beginning of a wonderful new and long-lasting chapter in their lives. And may they always love, honour and cherish each other, just as they do today. To life and mouth.